Ambient and atmospheric guitar pads and swells can be incredibly beautiful. You can make an entire song or composition out of them, or you can use these ambient guitar pads to give your music extra emotional impact and ambience. Today I'm going to share with you my approach for creating ambient guitar swells and pads. So let's get creative. For today I used my Fender Stratocaster which is set to its neck pickup, which is recorded directly into my audio interface. As an amp simulator I used the clean preset from Native Instruments Guitar Rig number 6. And to create the swells and ambience I used Echo Boy from Sound Toys for my delay and Valhalla Vintage Verb and Valhalla Room as my reverb. At the end of this video I'll also dive into what kind of chords and chord progressions work the best for these kind of ambient pads and swells. So be sure to stick around for that. And many tips that I show you in this video can also be applied to real life guitar pedals and guitar amps. So this is what our final result is going to sound like. What I love about this sound is that you have so many layers going on at the same time while it's just one instrument. And I think it's definitely a sound that you might have heard before. So now let's try to recreate the sound. I want to show you what the settings are on my amp simulator and also what EQ I'm using before the amp simulator. So before my signal enters the amp simulator here, I've placed an EQ with a high pass filter and with a low pass filter. The high pass filter is around 153 hertz and the high pass filter is around 6k. And I do this to filter out some of the frequencies so that my signal is a bit cleaner. And then after that the signal is sent to the guitar amp simulator Guitar Rig 6. And mostly I prefer a clean preset so that I have more room to sculpt the sound afterwards. So this is what the chord progression sounds like after the EQ and amp simulator. So it's a nice clean sound and actually nothing special is going on. And as you might have noticed I did not add any volume swells yet because I'm going to do that later on in the DAW because I feel that I have more control when I do the fades in the DAW itself. Also it's more flexible because you can still change things afterwards. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a delay to this track. And as you might have remembered in my last video about how to create an atmospheric clean guitar sound, I put all the delays and reverbs on send tracks or on aux tracks. But this time I'm going to do it differently. This time I'm going to add all my delays and my reverbs on the same track as my audio. So this first delay will be a single echo, so it will not create any extra stereo information. And I'll leave my mix until around 45% and a little bit of a low cut and I'm going to unlink it from the project tempo. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adjusting the delay time. I don't want the delay time to be too fast but I don't want it to be too slow as well. So I'm going for something in the middle and I found out that around 300 milliseconds is something that sounds nice. <laughs> So now that I like the delay time, now it's time to adjust the feedback to get enough repeats. And I'm just going to crank it up until let's say 50%. And that sounds nice. And I also want to add a little bit of saturation to the delay to just give it a little bit of a rough edge. So now it's time to move on to our second delay. And again this is going to be Echo Boy from Sound Toys. And this delay is going to be a little bit slower than the other one. I want the delays to interact and to create interesting rhythmic patterns. So that's what I'm going to be listening for. Again I'm going to add a little bit of a low cut and a little bit of a high cut because I want this delay to be a little bit in the background. I want it to blend a bit better. I just played around a little bit with the delay time and I found out that around 500 milliseconds is the sweet spot for me. And again I'm going to crank up the feedback. And now let's give it a listen. Probably you can hear that we're already getting some reverb textures by only using these two delays. 
But now that I have these set, it's time to move to the third delay. And this third delay is going to be a ping pong delay. Again, I use the Echo Boy, but you can use any delay that has the ping pong mode. Again, I'm going to unlink the delay from the project tempo. And I want to have one side that's a little bit faster and the other side a little bit slower. So what's going to happen, first the signal will be sent to the left channel with a delay of 424 milliseconds. And then the signal will be sent to the right channel with a delay of 233 seconds. And then it's going to go back and forth. That's why it's called ping pong. Now again, I'm going to crank up the feedback because I want a lot of repeats. But now I'm going to add a little bit more of a low cut because I don't want to have too much low frequencies in my side channels. And also I want to add a little bit of a high cut for the signal to blend in a little bit better. Okay, now it's off to the reverb. So my first reverb is going to be Valhalla Vintage Verb. I want to have a reverb that has a little bit of a chorus effect. So you want to have a large space with a lot of modulation. So if you would have this reverb on an AUX send, you would want to have it on 100% wet. But in this case, I don't want it to be 100% wet because it's on my original track. So I'm going to lower the mix down to about, let's say, 40% because I don't want too much. And there's going to be no pre-delay. But I'm going to change the decay time because this is way too much. And I'm changing the decay time because I don't need the decay time from the reverb. I just want the ambience because I already have the long tail going on from the delays. So I'm going to set it to about 2.8 seconds. And also what this does, it also softens the attack of the chords a bit. Okay, so that's starting to sound very nice. Now I want to add another reverb. And the next one in line is the Valhalla Room. And I'm going to set it to a hall reverb because I want a natural ambience with not that much modulation. And again, I'm going to adjust the wet to about 40%. I don't want too much. No pre-delay. And I'm going to lower the decay time. You can already hear some very nice frequency mixes going on. It's already sounding so ambient. But the thing is, we did not add the volume fades. So I'm going to be doing that manually by cutting all these chords and making them into separate clips. So here's the final result. I've made fades in the beginning and I cut off the string squeaks at the end. And now it sounds a lot cleaner. But as you might have noticed, we've also lost quite a bit of volume because of this. So I need to compensate for that. So I'm going to crank up the volume on the amp simulator. And also I'm going to add a little bit of volume on the track itself. Now it sounds like this. So this is already very beautiful sound and you can even stop here if you want. But we can also take it one step further and add more low tones and more high tones to the sound. And we do this by using a pitch shifter. So here I've added the pitch shifter, but the thing is I added it before the reverbs. So now it comes straight after all of my delays. So normally the pitch shifter is used to adjust tones and to only have the wet sound. But the thing is I want to blend both. So I'm going to raise the dry sound and I'm going to lower the wet sound to about minus 6.7 dB more or less. So now I'm going to add separate shifters. So I want to add one that lowers everything with an octave. So here I'm going to shift the wet sound with an octave down and I'm going to boost this with 2 dB, 2.5 dB. So that means that we get extra bass tones to our sound. Let's have a quick listen. So especially on that last chord, you could really hear that extra octave added to the bass. So I'm going to add another shifter, but this time I'm going to raise it with an octave. 
to create more high tones. So the only thing that I want to change, I want to change the volume of the shifter because I find that the high tones can be a little bit intrusive and they sound a bit unnatural when they're too loud. So I'm changing it to about minus seven or six dB. And just a quick comparison. So you see we're getting a lot of extra frequencies and the sound just turns a lot thicker. And now as a final detail, and it's going to be a very subtle detail, I want to add one extra pitch shifter, but it's going to add two octaves. But I'm going to blend this in very softly. When I solo this shifter, let me show you what this sounds like. And I'm going to raise the volume so that you can hear it again. So you see, you don't want that too loud in the mix. So I'm going to lower it with about 20 dB because I really just want it to be a detail. And then voila, our final sound sounds like this. So just on a side note, you don't have to use these pitch shifters. If you like the sound as it was, then just use the sound as it was. It's also beautiful. So now let's talk about what kind of chords are most suitable for these ambient pads and guitar swells. The thing is you want to stick to simple chords. And this is for a good reason. Normally in pop music and a lot of other styles, you're used to playing full chords because you want to have a full sound. But because we have quite a lot of repeats going on from our delays and also quite a bit of reverb, the sound will easily become an undefined blob and wall of music, which you don't want. When you keep the chords simple and nicely spaced, the sound does not muddy up that easily. And also you should not forget that when you add a frequency shifter, you add a lot of tones that were not there in the bass, but also in the higher frequencies. So for example, if I would add an extra lower octave, all of the notes will have an extra octave added. And definitely in our bass, we want to try and keep things as transparent as possible. So in general, you only want to play the root note, the fifth and the third. Occasionally, you can also play the ninth instead of the third or maybe the fourth, but try to keep it simple and transparent. For this episode, I've created a sound pack with all kinds of ambient guitar pads and swells that are ready to use in your compositions. The pack is available on my membership page and you would really support the channel and the creation of new videos by checking it out. In any case, I hope that you enjoyed the beautiful sounds that we've created today. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And for now, see you next time.